This is the main screen when you turn on the C64. Mostly every 8-bit computer had a basic in the ROM, or at least on the cartridge. You can call it desktop if you want. Let's type a stupid endless hello loop that probably everybody did back then to show, hey, look, I can write a program. To enter a program, you just type a line number, the command, print hello world. If you run it, it executes the command. Let's add a loop to it, line 20, go to line 10 and run it. If you want to save it on cassette, I will stop the program. You just type save and the file name, hello, and return, hit return. But uh, I want to save it on a floppy disk. Back then you could buy floppy disks that were already formatted. But I will show you how to format it. I won't use any program or cartridge just stock commands, which work also on the Commodore VIC-20, because it shares the same basic. The Commodore floppy drive is actually a fully functional computer on its own. It has a 6502 CPU with 2 KB of RAM, which you can actually program in machine code. Maybe I will do a separate video on this. To communicate with the device, you use the command open, you specify a file handler, 15. The second number is the device number, which is always 8 uh, for disk drive, unless you changed it to another value in case of a second, third or fourth floppy drive. The third value is a channel number. Uh, which is um, 15 uh, for the command channel. It is a good practice to choose the same value for the file handler as for the channel. The command you are sending to the floppy drive is n for new, 0, 0 stands for drive 0. The Commodore CBM and PET series had dual drives and you had to specify which one you want to access, but uh, that's not the case for the 15 for one. A column and the disk name, uh, let's choose demo, and an ID. Take 01 and close the communication. After I hit return, the drive will immediately start formatting the floppy without asking, are you sure? Everything will be raised if it was used before. I will stop the video here until the format has finished. Now I can save our world shaking program on the freshly formatted floppy disk with save hello comma 8 it is a good idea to compare the save file with the program in memory let's do it with verify hello comma 8 that's fine okay to show the table of contents you have to load the directory in memory, which will of course overwrite our masterpiece. Load dollar is for the table of contents, 8, and list. Here is a floppy disk name, demo, 0 run is the ID, 2a is the version of the disk operating system and here's our program hello it's a program and it takes one block and there are 663 blocks free let's load again our program 
hello, comma eight. We're doing a list, and there's our program. Let's go crazy and change it. Let's put an a sorry, exclamation mark. On the program and save it. Hello, comma eight. It's done. It says ready. I'm doing a verify. And there's an error. Let's load again our program. run hey the exclamation mark is missing that's our old program let's change it again exclamation mark save but we have to specify an override this is done with an add sign drive zero colon hello comma eight Now it takes longer. And a quick verify. Hello, comma eight. The check is okay. Load the program. Comma eight and run. Great. Let's write a new program new uh, let's make a loop from 1 to 10 and print the square root of variable i equals the square root of i Closing the loop and running the program. It's just another stupid program. Um, now I'm going to write the result to a text file. Let's open the file descriptor 2, drive 8 and um, channel 2. The channel must be below 15. Let's call the file name squares. It's a sequentially file and I want to write to it. Then here in the print, we're writing to the channel 2. And let's close the file descriptor. Okay, saving the program, right square, comma eight, and running the program. Let's check the table of contents. And there it is, squares, it's a sequentially file and takes two blocks. And now we are going to read the text file. Open file descriptor 2, drive 8, channel 2, squares, sequential and read input from file descriptor 2 into variable l and print it on the screen um, we have to fetch every line in a text file we do this by checking the variable st which is automatically set by the system a 
and stands for file status. If st equals zero, then everything is fine and we can read the next line. Then jump to 20. If st is 64, then jump to 70 on 60. We're writing an arrow. Arrow st and stopping the program on 70. Closing the file descriptor. Let's save it. Read square. And running the program. Great. It works. Let's load write square again and change the loop. numbers from 11 to 20. Uh, I made a mistake here. I want to do a space. Less 10. No, it's fine. Run it. Checking the result with read square. Oh, it's still 1 to 10. We had this before, right? It uh, won't overwrite the existing file, nor does it alert you. While we didn't ask a floppy drive, let's load write square again and do some modifications. Uh, okay. Let me change the loop again. To 20. And we are opening the command channel. 15, 8, 15. And Uh, yeah, I'm jumping here to a subroutine. Let's call it a thousand. And also after the print. Thousand. And let's write the subroutine. In the subroutine, I'm asking the status. There are four values, arrow number, arrow message, which is a string, arrow track, and arrow sector. If arrow number equals zero, then everything is fine, just return from the subroutine. Else, print arrow, arrow number, and arrow message and stop the program. Just list it. Okay, here. Opening, checking, checking. Uh, we have to put in an end here. Otherwise it will run again to the subroutine. Okay, save it. Uh, override. Right square running the program and it tells you file exists. You could actually modify the program that will ask the user if it is okay to overwrite the file um, 
but let's just override it. Okay, um, list eight, and we'll just do our override here. Um, I prefer to close the file handlers, to clean up the file handlers. and run the program again. Now it takes longer because it's checking the status. Loading read square and checking the results. And voila, one, uh, 11 to 20. Let's check the files on disk. If you want to do a backup of a program, you can load it and save it under a different name, or in the case of a sequentially file, just choose a different file name. But you could also tell the floppy drive to do it for you. That's what we are going to do now. Um, I want to copy squares. Opening the channel, the command channel, and copy, C for copy, 0 for drive 0, the destination file, backup, I will call it backup squares, and the source file, squares. Close the channel and the file should be copied now. Here you have backup square, sequential file, also two blocks. Now I want to rename the file. Opening the command channel again, or for rename, the new file name, let's call it bk squares equal backup square, closing the channel. And the file has been renamed. Finally, I'm going to delete the backup squares file. Opening the channel again. And it's not erase or delete, but it's scratch. S and BK squares. Last check, and the file has been deleted. Thank you for watching the video, but before I leave you, let me write a quick note. Bye-bye.